Hey, welcome back to another episode of Bag Surgery. Today we have the Cornhole Scenario Cat 2 Striker. These were sent to us by Ben Farrell out in Las Vegas, Nevada. Thank you so much, Ben, for sending us these bags. These are used bags. They are pretty darn well broken in. Like they are soft, super soft. Feel really, really good. This is the first time I've ever held these cornhole scenario bags. I mean, I was holding them off camera, of course, but everybody talks about these as being the holy grail of bags. But I'm here to tell you, well, there just ain't that much that's special to them. They are made very well on first glance, and we're going to take these apart take a look on the inside but these are made pretty well good size the fill feels really good the fill feels like it's been worn in pretty well like any little sharp edge on it is worn off it feels really soft and plushy whole friendly -y. we'll see if it's a mix or not my initial guess is that it is not going to be a mix Let's see if I'm right or wrong. Let's get our initial closer look at the bag, starting with this closing stitch. Done by hand. Very nice. Goes over half the length. It looks like it's about three inches. We're gonna measure that with a ruler. This fabric is on just about every bag on the market. Rate it at about an eight to an eight plus speed. This fabric is using the back side of the fabric. This side, a little slower, I rate about a six or a seven, somewhere between that, probably close to a seven. Uh, it's a twill fabric. I use it on my infiltrator bags and samurai bags. Of course, this side I use on decimator and shogun. Uh, nice corners. This is the 2020 version, so this bag is about two years old. Cut this goldeny brown color I mean, it stands out the sides match decently well what you'll notice is and we'll see it better in close-up but there's like a cross hatching pattern it's not in the fabric it's in the, in the design same on this back side too there's a little cross hatch pattern that kind of masks what fabric it is but if you know what you're looking at you know and the closing stitch, we got a bigger tack here than we do on this side. Everything's centered pretty well. That's centered. Logos in the corners. I don't know what this four means. If anybody wants to comment what the four means, it's definitely not the speed. This is the first video in the series that we're going to start measuring everything. Talking about closing stitch, we're going to measure the interior stitch. We're going to kind of attempt to measure the corners, the roundness, and we'll have to get a little database going because I'm going to be recording everything for each bag. We're going to record the weight, all that fun stuff. And it's a little easier to see the seam on this side. So let's do it here. Closing stitch on bag one. Two and seven eighths. Closing stitch on bag two. Two and three quarter. Bag three. Two and three quarter. Bag four. Two and three quarter. Just gonna remeasure bag one to make sure we had two and seven eighths. And yeah, two and seven eighths. So what does that tell us? All it tells us is that this was not done by an automated machine. This was done by hand. You can see the start here and it it's about a stitch longer there. Overall, very, very consistent. While we're in here, I just want to compare this to the Ultra Widow closing stitch. And they are just about the same. And that's, that was the first thing I thought of when I saw this. I was like, wow, that, they really went for the Ultra style. Ultra being a little bit closer to the edge. Take a look at a different one here. Same size, two and three quarter. A little closer to the edge on the Ultra. The Ultra and the Cornhole Scenario. Is it Scenario or Scenario? You tell me. Just about two and three quarter. 
and ultra stitch being just a hair closer. You can see it's kind of wavering and distant. That's just done by hand. And that's no big deal. Like it's so inconsequential. I'm just pointing out the most minute details because we can and that's what we should do. Time to get these little baggies weighed up before we take them one apart. 15.8, bag two. 15.8, bag three. Ooh, 15.9. Yep. Confirmed. 15.8, bag four. This one's 0.9 heavier. Again, that's like, I don't know, three or four pellets. So, not a big deal that this is a little overweight. Not a big deal at all. Just touching on the weight thing one more time. But like, it doesn't matter. It absolutely does not matter that one was 0.1 ounce heavier. These are filled by hand. I know they are because stitches done by hand. Everything else is done by hand. So these are fully made by hand. And notice this bag. What if we're going to touch on sublimation for a little bit? It seems a little bit more faded. Well, like this gray is darker. This gray is lighter. This gold is lighter this gold is darker so maybe a bad print maybe the, I, I doubt it's the fabric because of the color of the gray let's see here hmm. everything's pretty well centered These are so loose, it's kind of hard to lay them flat. Anyway, let's get to taking these bad boys apart. All right, we got it, folks. Let's get a sneak peek of what's inside here. As predicted, Am I right? Uh, yeah, single fill, single, single material fill. Definitely had a little bit of a time getting those closing stitches out. Wow, have you seen all this dust? Like resin dust, I guess. From the guessing from the edges of the resin cuts coming off but that is a buttload of dust wow huh this is the inside of the bag it says cat series right there but it's backwards well, very interesting stuff. We got a lot to go through here. It is double stitched. Holy freaking Luya. Good to see. Well, let's get started. Here is that fill covered in dust. Whoa. Well, what do you say we get super duper close up right now? Here it is, cornhole scenario, cat two, striker fill. Single pellet fill, they are quite small, these are tiny. Although I think some of it wore off. Oh, look what we have here, a clue, a tiny clue. It's coming in the screen right now, I'm pushing it that way. Oh, where'd you go? There you go. Can you see that little guy right there? That is not the same kind of fill. And that's just happened to be on top, lucky us. Might have been sitting around and might have got, fell into the box uh, when this fill was ordered by the manufacturer. Mm, just a loose piece of fill. But wow, these are oblong, not disc, they're like egg shaped, but flatter see that yourself but I like it 
Um, see on this one, it's kind of like a little, looks like skin almost. Where's my pointer? A little bit of skin kind of thing. I think that's what all this dust is because there is uh, an obnoxious amount of dust in this bowl. And in the bag, there's a, there's a few more of these little pieces. Well, regardless if it's the same one or not, there are, there's not enough to call it a mixed fill. I like the feel of this feel. I think the bags were a little too loose, personally. Like, they're not they're a little too floppy. Like you, could, you could put that last .2 or maybe even .4 more ounces into the bag and get a real nice feel. A little bit closer look at this stuff. It's got a weird kind of skin and weird kind of skin that can eventually come off. It feels like resin, it might be plastic. Mm. Unless I, I went and got it tested, I just wouldn't know. So. There's your fill, one fill. Super close up look at that dust. This dust covers like almost all the inside of the bag. And there's a lot going on inside this bag. Being a handmade bag, this is all bunched up. It's kind of hard to see this close. We'll back out again, but uh, this is the twill side, twill fabric. This is this side of the fabric is like the show side. So they, it looks like they use the back side of the fabric on the outside. And with this already being sublimated. Whoops, I guess, but they decided, oh, maybe it was a bad sub, or we messed up, and decided to sublimate the other side, but just toss this piece of fabric, get a new one. I think I broke down my expenses for fabric, like this one in particular, you're paying 10 or 15 cents per square, so... No excuse on that reutilization. This is the faster side, and this is the show side on the inside. The other side is the back side. I know that because that's the side the backing is on. There's a bit of a yellowing on the edges, uh, probably from use. It says Cat Series. Was that sublimated? I don't know. It's, it's backwards. All right, folks, we're taking apart another bag because that one, and I took it apart because it looked like there was some kind of goofy stuff going on with the sublimation and the fabric, and we were right. So we're going to take apart another one so that we can get a better look at the inside of the fabric. Um, the good news is with the other one being how it is, and this back tech is massive. That's like an inch. The other one being how it is, it gives some insight on the stitching. It's easier to see because the thread is kind of a silvery gray and the fabric was sublimated with a dark green. What the hell is going on here? I do not understand. Okay, this is the inside of two different bags. Remember, this is the one that looked funny at first. This one looked like the other three. They're both sublimated on the inside with an entirely different design. What the hell going on? Both of them say cat series backwards which means it was written on this side although I can't see we'll look up close in the microscope style but let's see what the heck that says 1 52 X I don't know what that means I, this is so weird it's just weird I now I want to open up the other two see what magical surprises we find inside well we did it <clears throat> took apart the other two bags Two different designs. Here's the first two we took apart. Oh 
all of these are different designs. I do not understand what's going on. None of them have anything in relation to each other because I don't know the cornhole scenario line of bags. I just don't care. I'm not ever going to pay what they what people are paying for these on the second hand market. It doesn't make any sense why you're paying that much per bags. And this really, really doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> why there's four different designs on the inside of the bag, folks. The inside of the bag. This last one says Cat Series right here. It's kind of hard to see. It doesn't say 1-52X like this does. It, I think it says A01. It's hard to tell. But, I mean, come on. I don't get it. I do not get it. Like, even this one looks dirty on this side. It's very weird. This is still white right here. This says OG. But it can't be original because it's on the inside of another bag. Maybe it was the original. And there's some who dittery around this corner. We'll get... Before we get real close on the bag, we're going to take a look at the business end of this fabric, the actual side of the fabric that should be facing out. In my opinion, I don't like when people use the back side of fabrics. Here you can see this This was bag was done by hand, all of it. They do it just like I do. They take their template, pow, put it on there and draw a line. You can see that line right here. Maybe it wasn't drawn, maybe it was sublimated. I do not know because there's sublimations on both sides of this bag. Possibly sublimated, which you can do, but it looks like it was drawn on with a marker or a pen of some sort. We're gonna get close up on it. Let's measure it and try to get this nice and tight there. Let's give it a good measurement. 6.25, 6.25 on the cross seam. This should also measure 6.25. I'm going to go up here. Can I get that right? Yep. A little bit short. But I think it's the fabric bunching up. 6.25. Across diagonal, we're looking at 7.5. 7.5. And, seven and a, half, a little more than 7.5. Fabric square itself, which was probably cut after they sewed it. Possibly. That is at seven and a quarter. Yeah, that's it's just such old fabric that's been used so much. It looked like seven and a quarter, but we're taking a look at the first bag we took apart. This is the starting part of the seams. I know that because this side has the line where they drew. I'm at, well, I'm, I don't know that. I'm imagining that they start here. Because these are both like pretty darn near perfectly in line with each other. So that seems like a good starting point. We got the back tack. One, two, three, four, five. Maybe six. What kind of thread? I don't know. Kind of came apart like polyester thread does, so. I'm gonna have to go with that. Let's, let's see what we can see here. Very, very fine. The nylon threads have like thicker parts. So this is probably bonded polyester, which is good. And this is good thread size too. Nice and thick, not gonna break on you. Nice gap all the way around this bag, as far as the seam goes. A little tight in that corner, but no big deal. I mean, I'm doing it by hand here, folks. In the end, it's off a little bit. Again, not a big deal. And I think I, I took some of these threads apart when I was opening it. It's fine. Let's see here. The opening seam is, or the hole is two inches. Right at about two inches. Let's see the other another bag here. See we got the same size opening. Oh, it looks a little bigger. Yeah, 
a little over two. Doesn't matter. Now why doesn't it matter? Because as long as it's closed all the way, like it only matters to the person making the bag and how hard it's gonna be to flip. Like this is, there's something going on there. Something really thick. This whole crease is really thick. Um, thread tension looks just fine. Like this whole bag is just so beat up. Oh, never mind. Thread tension needs to be adjusted. Remember, this is the top side that's being sewn on. And tension is too high. Take it down a notch or two, and you'll get yourself a perfect stitch. Let's take a look at that first bag. I'm assuming these are all sewn at the same time. This one's pretty good. Can't really feel the occlusion of the bumps, but uh, they're there. I'm trying to find a good dark spot on this. Here we go, maybe. You can see the line that was drawn. It might have been an ink pen, like this, drawn, and because the ink would have kind of set in. This is probably been wet and washed, and who knows what done to it so many times. that probably a better pen to do the drawing when this fabric is you know right out the press and not really handled too much you draw but this is perplexing this has to be sublimated even but it's it's not as prominent like right here where's my finger right here is the eye of the wolf you kind of see the colors so this was not sublimated on the on this side. It was done here, but it's backwards. Did they forget to, maybe they're doing it through Photoshop and they forgot to uh, mirror the image or flip the image, 1-25X, what does that mean? What does that even mean? Because on this bag, same thing. Cat series, 1-25X. Cat series. One dash fifty two. Is it fifty two or one dash S two? Maybe it's an S. One dash S two X. One dash S two X one. Kind of hard to get it apart there. Bear with me. One dash S two X. But this one, this bag that is just janky as hell. Let's do a quick comparison of old fabric, used fabric, and what the new stuff looks like. That's what a new sheet looks like. And with the other side. Yeah, and this is the business end that should be. They use the reverse side on both sides of this bag. See that? It's like an off-white, it's called vanilla. It looks like they sublimated on this backing side for the throwing side. Right now we're looking at the the main side, the playing side of the Coral Scenario Striker bag versus the fabric that the original fabric. And then this is the back side, the side with the backing. And on the other side, same thing. This is a little bit tighter twill. Yeah. Anyway, same type of thing, same speed. Now we got these flipped inside out. They're not filled yet. Uh, just going to talk about the design. The wolf has no nose. It has the logo for a nose. It's got red eyes, but it's also got red lines around the eyes. And blue P 
two irises. The teeth look really cool. I like the blood on the teeth. But overall, this the, the design seems kind of homemade. I don't have a problem with that. It's just, I mean, come on. I'm of the mind that you should be able to see the bag from 30 feet away, 27 feet away. See it in low light, you will see it against other bags, no problem. And if you're gonna cover up a gold background with something like this, like maybe something a little better looking. But I understand like if, if you're doing it all homegrown, it's not their fault that the bags became super popular and idiots forked over you know hundreds of dollars for them in the black market, off market, secondhand market, whatever. Like that's not the manufacturer's fault. But <laughs> I am surprised people actually pay that much for these bags, considering what it is. Single fill, whatever, double sublimated for whatever reason. I mean, they're, they're made pretty well, double stitched, good sized thread. Uh, materials are top end. These speeds aren't that different from each other. This is, I rate a seven, and I rate this an eight to an eight and a half. So it's a mid, mid range fast bag on the upper end. I like the logo that they use, it's pretty cool, with the teeth and the blood, CS, like that's a cool logo. But making it the wolf nose, eh, I don't think so. Stryker, I played Stryker. Still, I don't know what the four is for, I don't know what MW is for, maybe it means like something that this is the slow side and this is the fast side, but seriously, MW4, I don't know. On the inside of the other bag, it said OG. Another one said United, they all say United we throw, pretty cool. Now they say do not boil. I'd love to get my hands on a newer stamp set. I think they're stamped now. And see if they still have the same inner sublimations for whatever reason. Uh, what else was I gonna say? Okay. It looks textured because it is textured. On the, I suspect on the design itself, there's a crosshatch pattern overlaid on top, which is why there's little crosshatchy patterns here, and it's not on the teeth. It's a little crosshatchy in the gray. Let me try and get in there. You can kind of see a little crosshatch pattern. Anyway, what's well, in conclusion, after spending three times as long as I wanted to on making this video, recording the clips, what we have here is a regular bag. What's really special about this particular set? Uh, nothing other than the fact that it's really broke in. Uh, I mean, a template, six and a quarter inch template, a little bit pointier corners than uh, I do, but again, it doesn't matter at all. I don't like that they did the, the backing side of the fabric and I think they did it here too. Let's do the regular side. I do not understand why this is double sublimated. Why there are four different designs on four different bags on the inside of the bag. Don't get it. Closing stitch was nice. I got them closed back up. It was a little difficult because these bags are so broken in. <laughs> uh, other than that, like if you could get these for 50 bucks, yeah, go get it. But if you're the one paying 300 bucks for these bags, like, don't do it. Don't do it. Buy them from the manufacturer, the maker, cornhole scenario. Don't give some guy on the internet $400 for something like this, all right? Support your local bag maker. Once again, I just want to thank Ben Farrell for sending me these bags just to take apart. These are his bags. We're sending them back because these are so wore out and goofy and I kind of messed up the closing stitch on one of them because, well, the fabric is super loose. Pete, ben is getting a brand new set of bags, same materials, same fast side, same slow side, kind of the same color. I just went with a gold I had this Shiner Bach design in my files. That I, it's on my Etsy site, so I printed these out for them. Same fill, same fabrics. I think the same size, because I know what size my template is. 
Yeah, thank you, Ben. You're getting yourself a free set of bags. And thanks for watching, by the way, everybody. Thanks for watching. Cornhole Scenario, Cap 2, Striker, United We Throw, many designs. The ones that look cool are on the inside. <laughs> Go figure. Anyways, if you're buying them from the manufacturer, like I said, pay what they're asking. Don't go paying exorbitant amounts of money on the secondhand market for these bags, all right? Just support your bag manufacturer. Give them the hundreds of dollars that you shouldn't really be paying. These are worth about, I'd say, 60 to 70 Well, if they were new, I'd price them at 60 If they're not new, I'd price them at 40 No stamp, so that's what I'd price these at. And if I, you know, if I sell this particular fabric combo on my website, you can expect to pay 50 bucks. Keep an eye out.